See Grizzly.com for combo sanders. Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. For the top of the table, I'm going to use this slab of eight quarter mahogany. And this is another leftover piece from my bed build. The only bad part about this slab of mahogany is that it has a crack that runs about one third the distance of the piece of wood and it goes about all the way through. But I think I can still use it. So what I plan on doing is ripping this board down the center and then each half I'll resaw at the bandsaw and that should give me plenty of lumber for the top. And because everything came from the same piece of wood, it should match beautifully. Before I can rip this board down the center at the table saw, I need to get a nice flat and straight edge on one side to reference off of the table saw fence, and I'll do that at the joiner. Before I resaw these boards at the bandsaw, I always like to flatten one face first, and I'm going to do that at the joiner. But this board is over the capacity of my joiner. It's about six and a quarter inches wide, and my joiner only has a six inch capacity. So I'm going to overhang the joiner by a little bit, and that little section that I can't get at the joiner, I'm going to get with a hand plane. I'm going to give this one more pass at the joiner and then I'll repeat the same process with the hand plane. There's one more thing I like to do before I take a board over to the bandsaw to resaw, and that's to get one edge nice and square to one flat face. So now that I already have a flat face from the joiner, I'm going to square this edge to it so that when I go to the bandsaw, it'll be much more stable against the fence of the bandsaw. The top, which is going to be an oval, is 15 inches at its widest. So I can get this top from only three boards. I won't need all four. So what I think I'll do is separate one of the book matches and place one of the boards from the other book match in the, in the middle. But I think because the outer two book matches are too far from each other, I'll lose some of that book match effect. But I think it'll still look nice because all of the lumber came from the same board and the outermost boards are actually a resaw from each other. So the grain will match really nicely. I'm going to get these boards closer to their final width before planing them to thickness. With the face jointed sides down, I'll plane these boards to thickness. Now that I have all these boards planed to thickness, I need to edge joint all the mating surfaces nice and square. Now I just need to glue these tabletop boards together. I have the top out of the clamps and I've sanded both sides. The next thing I'm going to do is trim both sides of the top and this will make defining the drop leaf sections a lot easier when I go to cut those out. I'm going to cut the drop leaf sections out before I make this into an oval. I think that will be a lot easier. Now that I've separated each leaf from the center part of the top, I need to treat each side of the top with a 3 8 inch round rubber bit and one side of each leaf with a 3 8 inch cove bit. Now I've already made a sample of what this is going to look like. The center part of the top will actually overlap over top of each drop leaf and it looks something like that.
I'm gonna move the fence back for the final pass. I switched out my 3 8 inch cove bit for a 3 8 inch radius roundover bit. I have the center portion of the top flipped upside down and I'll get both sides in two passes. And on the second pass, I'll move the fence back, exposing more of the bit. When I slide the leaf onto the cove, the leaf sits a little bit too proud and it's off by about 60 thou. So I raised the height of the router bit by 60 thou and this should be flush on the next pass. Not too bad. I used a quarter inch cove bit to make room for the knuckle of the hinge. I'm gonna cut the threads first with these steel screws and then later I'll insert the brass screws. I'm gonna space out the leaf with a couple pieces of sandpaper so when the leaf is opened and closed, it'll be less likely to rub. I drew an oval onto the bottom of the tabletop and I'm gonna cut it out of the bandsaw with the leaves attached. I forgot to mention that the hinges that I'm using are made specifically for drop leaf tabletops. One side of the hinge is longer than the other and you put the longer side of the hinge on the leaf portion of the tabletop. I got these hinges from Brusso Hardware and they're of extremely high quality. I'm very happy with these. Um, if you've never been to Brusso Hardware's website, I definitely would encourage you to check them out. I took the leaves off of the table and I'm gonna round over the underside of the table using a quarter inch radius roundover bit. And I'm going to do it in two steps. And on the second step, I'm going to raise the height of the bit so that I can reduce chip out. I switched out the quarter inch radius roundover bit for an eighth inch radius roundover bit. And now I'll just give the top of the table some good loving. I need to start working on the supports next, which will slide out and support the leaves on each side. And then after that, there's not a whole lot left to do, so home stretch. The board that I'm going to use for the support is one of the book matched halves of one of the boards that's in the top. So this wood should match really nicely. When the support slides back and hits the opposite rail on the other side, I want it to be flush on the side. So I'm just going to make a mark with a marking knife and then I'll cut these to length. This dovetail underneath the support will ride on a dovetail that's going to get attached to the underside of the top. This lip I'll get at the planer.
took everything apart and then I put on two coats of a mixture of varnish, mineral spirits, and royal linseed oil. And I think it came out looking really nice. I have everything together after it cured and I want to show you guys one other thing I did. I glued two blocks onto the sliding supports and these are going to serve two purposes. They're going to give you a place to grab from under the table so that you can easily slide the support out. And they're also going to serve as a stop so when they reach the end of their travel the stop will hit the rail and it won't go out any further. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this build. If you'd like to build your own, on my website I'll have the plans, which will include instructions, more photos, and the dimensions of all the components. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I hope you would uh, consider subscribing. And also, if you'd like to contribute to what I do here, you can become a patron of Garage Woodworks, and you'll find more information about that and also the plans in the video description. Thanks for watching, guys.